two northerners posted, and let me read out what they posted. They were comparing Belotuji, the notorious criminal kidnapping terrorist, to Namdi Kanu, who is a freedom fighter. And you know how freedom fighters are regarded all over the world. If you're a freedom fighter in any country, there's always a way they treat you. But this is an affront on the intelligence of the Igbo people for these two northerners to compare a Belotuji to Namdi Kanu. This is what they wrote. Isn't it strange that the Nigerian government could track down and arrest Namdi Kanu, who hasn't caused even half the terror Belotuji has, all the way on another continent? But they can't locate and apprehend Belotuji, who is comfortably residing within our own borders. Putting Belotuji and Namde Kanu in the same sentence is abominable. These two people are of different classes. Another person who served under Buhari's regime, Bashir Ahmad, also said, Belotuji, like Namde Kanu, supposed to be grilling in the deepest part of the worst prison in the country for the terror and death he has inflicted upon Nigerians. Both individuals have caused harm to the safety and security of Nigeria. Their actions have led to widespread fear and devastation, and they should be held accountable under the full force of the law. One of the reasons I'm making it broadcast is to make you understand why Namde Kanu is very, very much different from Belotuji and why they are of a different class. I repeat, it is abominable, it is an insult to the integrity of the Igbo people to put Belotuji side by side with Nam de Kanun. One is a criminal, one is a blood-testy Islamic fundamentalist. One has no ideology of any repute, while the other is a freedom fighter. Let's take a look at an example. Now, we have protesters protesting end to bad governance. These are people like Namde Kanu protesting the evil in the government. Your government, government of President Bolamen Tunubu, arrested them and charged them for treason. These are the same people you can put side by side with Namde Kanu. Namde Kanu was supported one Nigeria until he got to a point that he was tired because he saw that there was no way out, which is usual of an Igbo man. Everybody that fought for uh, Biafra, fought for the independence of the Southeasterners or the whole of the South, once supported Nigeria. And what inspired the agitation is that they want a better country. This is different from a Belotuji. I know, you know, most of our Southwest and Northern brothers have been unfortunate at every point in time where they want to talk about Namde Kanu. You see, they hate when we talk about having Biafra and IPOB. They just hate the name. Because the real reasons behind this is because Nigeria will never survive if the South is out of this contraption, out of this unity. Nigeria will never survive. They know very well that the resources that is coming from the South, South, and the South East is what is keeping Nigeria together, not whatever political alliances they are having. If today the South East breaks, from Nigeria, even you are talking about the five plots of land, Southeast breaks from Nigeria, the construct, the criminal construct that the colonial masters handed over to some persons in Nigeria will be destroyed and there will be no benefits. Imagine Northern as having more oil wells, owning more oil wells that is from the South than Southerners. So the reasons why you are calling Namde Kanu a terrorist or criminal is because you are unfortunate is because you have an evil intention. How would you look at somebody who is fighting for the freedom of a people? He didn't start that fight. Ojuku was there. He fought for the freedom of his people. And the government itself, if you put the government side by side, if you take the government to an international court, the government will be indicted. The government will be the criminal here. Aren't you asking yourself the question are you not asking yourself the question that the court has not been able to find namdi kanu guilty the court has not been able to find namdi kanu guilty are you not asking yourself that question 
if he were to be a terrorist? Why is it that the courts in Nigeria are not doing all they can to secure a judgment against him? So all these guys, Bashir Ahmad Sarki on Twitter, you are coming out to put Namdi Kano and Ibelo Tuji in one sentence, or a Boko Haram member in one sentence. Imagine a country that we have terrorists being pardoned, pardoned and being enlisted into its military. A country who is going to pardon terrorists and these terrorists will be drafted into the military. Can't you understand what is happening here? A country that is sponsoring terrorism, according to even the Bell of Truth, came out and said that a minister under Tunubu's regime is sponsoring terrorism. And it's um, common knowledge, people agree to this fact, that 24 hours, if there's insecurity, if there's any evil, if there's any crisis, if there's any terror, Within 24 hours, the hand of the government is in it. So, Belo Tuji is a common criminal Islamic fundamentalist. What is the ideology of a Belo Tuji? Somebody could just answer this question. Even the Saraki and WhatsApp, him, you are coming on, on social media to say all sort of rubbish. A Bashir Ahmad, people that are not supposed to be in, be opening doors for public officials because of nepotism. You find yourself in those places of power and you just have the, the, the leverage to start spewing rubbish. Nabdi Kanu, it is, he is not and never. A Bero Tuji cannot stand side by side with the Nabdi Kanu. If there's justice in Nigeria, you, or you have known it. You have Bero Tuji within your borders, committing all sorts of crimes and criminality, killing people, abducting people, destroying our machineries, you see, at will. And they, they come out freely to do TikTok live videos and everything. The Nigerian government could go as far, back, as far back as Kenya to abduct somebody, but yet in their space, their sovereign space, they are not able to lay hold on a criminal without what is the ideology of what is making Belotuji do what he's doing. What is the ideology? Okay, what is the ideology of the Boko Haram? You declare war on communities that without any sort of reason, because you believe that you are against Western civilization, you declare, you kidnap, you kill, you collect ransom, you do all sorts. And even a governor, Masari, was seen having pictures with some of these bandits. Is it the same government that would you, you would now see as a government that is responsible? These people are the people that work under this government. And every time you say, I am IPOB or I support Biafra, people are just naturally angry with that. They are very, very angry. And I've told you the reason. Reasons very clear is because the resources that is being cut in from the south is what sustains the north. And anytime Nigeria breaks, which is not a, an illegal thing, the same thing protesters are protesting. So the treatment that is being given to Namdi Kano is being given to protesters. So you people should not complain if you are going down that route. You protest in a country that does not respect the rule of law, the rights of its citizens, you are being arrested and charged for treason. What, are, what is the difference between an agitator and a protester? Just tell us the difference between an agitator and a protester. Mnamdi Kanu is calling for fairness. I told you before he started Let Nigeria Break, he said he, he supported a one Nigeria, asked for fairness and justice when he saw that he could not get this under this construct. Like I said, when you look around, with the people we have in power today, you cannot get justice and fairness from any, any, any corner, from anywhere. You cannot get justice and fairness. The founding fathers saw that Nigeria was not workable. Some of them were killed. They knew it. And this is what this guy is saying. Nigeria is not workable. And you are comparing him with a criminal who is in the bush, killing, destroying, killing soldiers, killing causing insecurity in the region. Insecurity that is being caused in the southeast is 
the government is accused of piloting the insecurity in the southeast. It is believed that the government wants the southeast to be unstable so that it can continue in power. If the southeast is together, if they have their hands, they get their hands together, you see that there will be a force that will drive the nation against any opposition. But they intend, they have seen this beforehand, they intend to make sure the southeast is a no-go area. There's a prophet they call Onye is a Jesus. He has been kidnapped. He's a popular person in the southeast. So what will you say about that? People are afraid to go to the south because you don't know who is who. Some people are being used to cause insecurity in the southeast. I can mention Hupu Zodima and some other people who are piloting themselves as politicians using uh, the guise of unknown government and everything to cause all sorts of atrocities. Indigenes are kidnapping fellow indigenes in the southeast. While the, the, the government supervises and looks the other way, that is their new role in the southeast. All this uh, militarization of the southeast, there's nothing you can get out of it but to extort the southeasterners, extort them, make life unbearable for them. That is why you have your presence in the southeast. So you are supporting the unstable instability in the southeast so namde kanu is not the reason why there's insecurity in the southeast but belotuja and his likes are the weapon fashion against the nigerian government yet he is accusing the nigerian government of sponsoring them some soldiers came out to do a video one one time like that and they said they were challenging the belotuji to come out from his uh, hideout even though their orgas have not instructed them to go and meet him in that his hideout. In Nigeria, is it that the Nigerian army, they are afraid to go and attack a Belotuji? Is Belotuji bigger than Nigerian armed forces? Now, everybody is talking about Namdi Kanu. Don't mention Namdi Kanu from your mouth. Namdi Kanu is not a terrorist. You can debate it in any court, sensible court, OPEC, uh, International World Court, ICC. You can debate it in any court. Uh, of course, you are, you, you, you are losers. You cannot prove your point because you are just, you are just, it's all about hate for the woman. Hate for the woman. Look at what, what is happening in the country today. Most of the things that Nkano said, about Nigeria. Look at what is happening today. People, schools have resumed. People cannot send their children to school. To feed service is even a problem. Not to talk of sending these children to school. Some parents have withdrawn their words from school. This is a Nigeria that you are fighting for. All of a sudden, we have all given hope and expecting fail to get to 1,500. We have natural resources, we have refineries, we have the crude oil, but yet it is scarce. Nobody's, nobody's willing to probe anybody, nobody's willing to tell us the reasons why. They are coming to tell us ec economics and whatever, that this, that, this, that. We have refineries and people are not in jail for, for committing treason on the Nigerian people. We have our crude oil, people are stealing it, and you are not, this is crime against the state, this is treason. But the people that are protesting against bad governance are the ones you are asking the court to charge them for, to, to convict them for, for treason. The ones that are protesting against a government that wants to destroy their lives, they are protesting. You cannot push somebody to the wall, they go to the wall and expect it not to fight back. You have pushed Nigerians to the wall, Nigerians are fighting back. You are now asking the court. To jail them for treason. Can't you see the logic behind everything? If you are going to call, if you are going to call Namdi a terrorist or whatever, what about the Nigerian government and what he has been doing on the people? I repeat again. You have everything, both crude oil, both refinery, but access to cheap petrol is not there, and so people they, themselves they just position themselves as parasite, milking. Our commonwealth, nothing is being done to them, and you're expecting the people to pay. You, as a leader, you steal our commonwealth to the extent that you steal everything. Nigeria has no money, 
the people you are stealing from, you are still as asking them to pay so that you can steal more. There's no explanation for whatever. A Tunubu supported the Buhari and said Buhari was our savior, which is political, we know. You carried out a protest against Jonathan, which is political, we know. It's not because of the people. It's not because we wanted good for Nigeria. If you had removed subsidy, then it would have been better. But you had to protest against Jonathan to, to not remove subsidy in your own tenor. These people, well, you see, some people have given up. Some people are still having little hope. When an Igbo man tells you that this is where this country is going to, you need to believe him because they have seen, understood it, the, the, the construct called Nigeria. The only solution to Nigeria, if they would take it, when you go to universities, um, project topics on how to solve issues in Nigeria are there since 1960s. There are project topics that have profound solution to this people, this, this thing called, this people called leaders. I don't see them as, give them the word leaders as people that needs to be commended are people that are freedom fighters, real one, not those ones that are fighting with their pockets. Because the freedom fighter that is fighting for his pockets, you know, that is fighting because of uh, an agenda, you know. I respect somebody like Namdi Kano. We know we don't. Nobody comes close. Nobody comes close. You can call me a criminal. You can sell all sorts. You can sell all sorts. So if you support the incarceration of Namdi Kano, also we shall support the incarceration of any protester that protests under Tinubu's government. Because you are supporting evil, then let's all support the evil all along. Why are you people crying that protesters are being charged for treason? Why? Why? The protesters destroyed, killed policemen. Yes, they destroyed because of their anger, which is understandable at a point. A hungry man is an angry man. An angry man is unpredictable. Who caused this hunger? It is the government. And the government is punishing you for reacting after they provoked you. Can't you see it from that aspect, that angle? So, like freedom fighters, like protesters, like civil society organization, like human rights activists, you compare Namdi Kanu to them. Don't ever compare Namdi Kanu to all those terrorists up north and those that have infiltrated the Nigerian army. People don't want to go into the Nigerian army because it has been taken over by infiltrators. A government that saw it wise to bring in repentant whoever into the Nigerian army. A government and give them guns people that went to school people that are smart people that are intelligent you have seen a terrorist you have been able to rehabilitate a terrorist you you the world powers have not been able to do so but you have been able to rehabilitate a terrorist you have been able to rehabilitate a terrorist and you you, you spit on our intelligence and have to Enlist these people into the Nigerian army. After you do all sorts, no end in sight. Nobody's being sacked. Nobody's resigning because they cannot be able to stop these guys. But it is just anything has. You can see how the army military have militarized the whole of Southeast. Anything that has to be Igbo, it is just off it. So you Saraki, you Bashir Ahmad, don't ever try it in your wildest dream and imagination. Compare Namdi Kanu to Belotruji. If you people want to hold Belotruji, you hold him. But you don't want to hold him. You don't expose sponsors. You know the sponsors. You don't want to expose the sponsors because the sponsors you are exposing will expose you because you all are the same criminals in Nigeria. You have all perpetrated criminality one way or the other in Nigeria. And you know your secrets. So you don't want to expose yourselves. This one have stolen from Nigeria and these other criminal that is sponsoring terrorism knows. So they are going to threaten you. If you expose me, I expose you. That's why you people don't want to put an end to insecurity in the north. Northern governors are there. The emirs are there. All of you are there and things are happening. The other time, 150 people were killed. 150 people were killed. 
if APC were the opposition, they would have blown the trumpet so high that the whole world would have been, would be shaking. 150 people killed. And people buried them and acted as if nothing was happening. The soldiers were there. The army was there. Anywhere you have this army, you are having also the atrocities. Is it, not a, is it not the product of you enlisting Boko Haram members into the Nigerian army? And they are spread all across the country to cause mayhem. That's why some people don't feel safe when they see any official, any official. They don't feel safe. Whether it's the police, whether it's the army, whether it's the NSCDC, they don't feel safe because of how a country would be supporting terrorists. The ones that are fighting for freedom, you call them terrorists. The ones that are destroying Nigeria, you are empowering them. I've been able to make my point. If you don't get it at this point, you're asking that uh, Namdi Karun says, destroy this, destroy that, destroy it. See, if you really want revolution, there are some sacrifices that will be made. Because the construct, present construct, if you want to really do revolution, you can't do, re you do revolution peacefully and get results. You cannot. Your peaceful protest, you are the one that will, will retire. With the kind of black people we have in the country, Nigeria, even abroad, they are destroying things because of the protests. The protests get so bloody. The, the, the army, they are there to provoke you so that you can be violent. That's their style. So what do you expect? What do you expect? If the government needs to listen to you, there needs to be a revolution. But since we don't want revolution to be possible, let's continue. Let's continue.